welcome back everybody to villa birds with your two favorite most beautiful (laughs) most intelligent most it girl hosts anika and val and val and anika that's the duo i am currently on our instagram account shameless plug at villa birds and val there is a very handsome indian man and by handsome i just mean he's an indian guy who wants us to send him pics on insta dms so um okay i'll take one for the team just kidding (laughs) okay no that sounds good i got did you you. want to take that one i well i was just gonna say that our our social media is popping because we officially have moved on from the porn bot accounts to now thirsty men asking us for pictures of us even though we did go we did uh, post good pictures of ourselves ghost yeah we did honestly look at us go we both look hot we're in like summery pics i'm in the daytime you're in the nighttime we are a deadly duo that cannot be defeated Period. and with that i am here to welcome us back to episode two surprise we surprised y'all with two episodes today um yeah today we are just talking about day two of love island and with that we're just gonna get right into it val what were the happenings of day two girl okay the happenings of day two so davida came into the house into the villa night one and you know we didn't talk about this on day one Mm -mm. but they played a truth or dare game and then after the truth or dare game davida was told he got a text sorry let me not forget true most important words he got a text saying that in 24 hours he will get to couple up with a girl of his choosing leaving one boy vulnerable and so that has set the tone for day two so day two happens everybody's talking everybody finishes out the night they go to sleep um then they wake up we find out some of the couples have gotten quite close and cuddled Two of those couples being Tasha and Andrew and Luca and Paige, all cuddle bugs in bed. As the day progresses, everybody's chatting with their couples. You know, still, it's pretty dead, I would say. But later in the afternoon, everybody plays a game to get it to know each other. It's called baggage claim, I believe, where they all find out little secrets about themselves or each other. And then after the game, everybody gets ready to hang out for the evening again. Everybody puts on their nighttime clothes. And Davida ends up picking one girl of his choosing. Should I say who that is at the top? Or should we say, I mean, everybody actually already watched the episode. So he picked Gemma. And we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> I will preface by saying spoilers. <laughs> but yes, that's spoilers. why you're here. <laughs> yeah. So. Please don't watch this episode or listen to this episode if you haven't watched the episode. But I would hope that you're all wise enough to know that. Yes, he ends up picking Gemma. Uh, Again, I have my thoughts. But before we get into that, we are going to talk a little bit of structure because that's just how we are. So to start, Val... We are going to talk mm. about this game, Baggage Claim, which, by the way, I think would be really fun if we played, might I add. <laughs> but aside from Baggage Claim, we are also going to shamelessly plug a new term here on the show. We are going to be discussing birdhouses, and the way that this works is that we are going to go ahead and talk about overlapping couples and triangles, but we are going to group them together in a house, and that's how we're going to keep our structure as we continue our podcast going forward. Yeah, and you guys will see how that works in just a little bit. Um, We all know how Love Island works. It gets messy with the pairings, and you can hardly keep track of them past day one. So this is just the best way to keep track of the couples as we move forward into the episode. 
Absolutely. So, baggage claim. We're not going to talk about everything that we found out, but I will say, first of all, Andrew, our little uh, Dubai selling sunset man, the one who Val absolutely loads entirely, yeah. both physically, mentally, and spiritually. emotionally. <laughs> and spiritually, yes. This man, we find out, he has had a threesome with two American girls who they refused to name because your hosts had to sign an NDA that night. <laughs> um, and that's why I hate him. <laughs> we never got our coin from bagging <laughs> a Dubai <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was just kind of mad that he left me on red the next day. It was really hurtful. <laughs> um, no, obviously, we're just kidding. I would not touch him with a 10-foot pole. Yeah. No shade, so but shade. We've yeah, so we found out this guy likes to play. Um, aside from that, <laughs> we we find out that his uh, counterpart on the show here, Tasha, has taken nudes for another man while she was in a relationship. Hoo ya, <laughs> go girl. I that shocked me. I'm just yeah. Every episode that rolls out, I'm like, she is spicy. Yeah, but. I agree. I love it, though. What a way to start off Hot Girl Summer. <laughs> <laughs> I, again, I do not condone cheating. I do not condone toxic relationships. I want to just put that out there. Um, no, yeah, I agree. But she is interesting Megan stuff. The Stallion's VP, for sure. It's I'm shook. It's great, and I love to hear that. I love learning about new stuff. I also did want to say that during the interaction between her and Andrew – that he did give her a cheeky slap on the ass with the security wand, which I thought was very he refreshing. He did that. <laughs> to he see. did that. Again, not condoning BDSM if it's injuring the other person. Uh, I will keep my opinions about BDSM quiet, but I am winking in the camera right now. So, <laughs> if you oh know, my you God, know. stop. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... Um, aside from that, we learned that India broke up with her boyfriend and then changed her number in true India fashion. Love it. Love to hear it. Could that be more <laughs> iconic? I love that for her. She said, do not hit um, my line ever, period. Leave me alone. I've no, moved but on. For, but for people who luckily are on their parents' phone plans. They don't know this, but I am not, so I do. It is so hard to change your number, dude. You got to close so that. Hard. You got to pay off the phone for some reason. Then you got to close the account. Then you got to get a new number, and then you have to make sure that your carrier is okay with that number. I don't know. I'm whole side tangent, like dad mode conversation about this because yeah. I went through a lot. But anyway, so that's baller AF. Next... We found out, and I'm sorry, this is the one that bothers me the most. Mm. We find out that Luca, Mr. Tatted Up Fishmonger, spent $1,000 on a first date. Are you kidding? Why would you do that? You're just bothered because you didn't think my man had money, girl. <laughs> You're just like, oh, what's a lowly fishmonger going to do? Hmm? Um, I don't know. Spoil a girl? I, what do you mean? Why would you spend a thousand dollars on a first date if you want me? Yeah, and I said last episode that I don't care about you know money. Yeah, you go tell your boyfriend that you want you want him <laughs> to spend a thousand dollars on a date now. Like, no, girl, but, what? Um, <laughs> no, not to be a hypocrite. I don't need a man to make money. It's not important to me. But you know. It be, if you want to spend a thousand dollars on me and make me want to feel wanted, um, I'm here and I'm down. And if you're doing that on fishmonger money, like even better, you know. I also feel like I have to preface that I'm not hating on his occupation. I just think <laughs> like it is so fun. So let me give a little bit of context real quick. I'm sorry. The reason why I'm laughing about him being a fishmonger is because, as y'all know. You know, I'm an, I'm American, but the background mm. here, the motherland is Pakistan. Pakistan mm. and India have Bollywood. And let me tell you, there is a good-ass movie in Bollywood 
with a very famous star and he starts as a fishmonger turned bomb squad like sergeant lieutenant and (laughs) falls in love with a lady who in order to keep him protected makes a vow to jesus to never let him die and i'm sorry so this is what i'm associating luca with is like it's just so funny to me and i just can't get over the fact that he's a fishmonger like this is for background for everybody to know um well now i understand yeah but like it's just so funny i like can't get over it i didn't think it was a real job until he came on and all through the stuff so that's why i'm i'm being like not a hater but i'm just like (laughs) surprised i'm like oh my god what like you have a thousand dollars to spend on the first date also where did you go and why didn't it work out this is what i need Mm. to know so we we don't know yeah but now see now you've set the expectations very high for me because I'm like, oh, God, like now he has to go through a whole journey in this villa. Yeah, he, <laughs> he has to, to start he... as a fishmonger and end as something crazy. But yeah. I, so OK, I don't know. And no, but to be fair, though, wait, let's think. Where did he get those teeth done? He's got teeth money, girl. And what about the tats? He does. He can afford he the does. tats. Listen, so. I am not surprised that he makes good money because it's a, I think, I assume, a very physically demanding job. Right? His body a would look it if it was a physically demanding job. Hey. Maybe no, no, not. I'm just saying, like, he would no, be yeah. a lot more built, I feel like, because fish are heavy. This is just I, my thought. You know, I don't know. I, maybe that's true, but I feel like movers. I don't know if you've seen movers, but they're not. They're like really strong, but they're not all like. They don't have like washboard abs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's um, fair. Okay, you know what? I'll eat my words there, but this is just my <laughs> thought. Again, one thousand oh. dollars for a man of his occupation. That seems like a lot. And I guess I'm, it says that a fishmonger mm. is just somebody who sells raw fish and seafood. And um, tra- trained at selecting and purchasing and handling, gutting, boning, filleting, displaying, and merchandising their product. So it has nothing to do with the um, labor. fishing and the labor. Hmm. So actually now I am, I am confused. Whatever. It's Europe. They get paid more money than we do. Oh, yeah. Well, I... Again, putting the finance hat on, I have a lot more to say about that, but I'm going to be quiet. (laughs) Okay, valid. But anyway, so we find out that Luca spent $1,000 on the first date, and I will say one more thing, actually two more things that I was surprised about, (laughs) that Mr. Dunce, and sorry again that I'm saying this, Mr. Personality of a Pistachio, he (laughs) has upgraded to a more tasteful nut, which I cannot picture up this i don't know what a cashew he's got personality of a cashew he's got a little tang to him okay he dropped out of having a threesome because he did not want to pay for the hotel and it's like what <laughs> like mr fishmonger's got money but masters of strength and conditioning doesn't yeah that one was interesting so he's 23 though so i don't know how long he's been in his career for in terms of finances but it didn't you know it didn't say that he couldn't pay for the hotel it said that he didn't want to and maybe he just said that to save face but that just doesn't rub me the right way because it seemed like you were totally fine for a threesome until you had a you know put in a little work with right. a bill, well, here's, exactly. Here's the thing that made me laugh, though, is, like, A, w- how more baller can you, like, try to look on a show that's advertised globally? Or, I guess, mm-hmm. shown globally, A. B, the thing that I thought th- was the funniest thing is we finally got a reaction from Gemma being a little, like, concerned, a little jealous, maybe, a little intrigued. Like, she finally, you know, her ears perked up, so to speak. And, Mm. you know, we actually got a reaction out of her, a good one, regarding Liam, which I thought was very funny. So, yeah, the only other thing that, again, 
this group of guys is just making me laugh. But <laughs> they find out that Paige has kissed 10 girls. And they all had these big goo-goo eyes the entire time, which I thought was the funniest thing. Because I believe there was a girl-on-girl kiss during the Truth or Dare game as well on the first night. Which they were also surprised about. And, you know, not which to is label... so funny. Yeah, not to label any of these women. Um, I They haven't said if they are anything other than heterosexual. But it's almost as if these group of guys have never seen um, a bisexual woman or any sort of bisexual bisexual activity. Um, they seem mm-hmm. very confused about the entire um, like happenings with Amber and Tasha's kiss. They were like, "What? Can she do that?" And that was just. I mean, she was dared to flatter the most prettiest girl with the... Or no, was she dared to flatter the most prettiest girl? She was dared to, you know, use her best pickup line. She used it on Tosh, and you know, she kissed Tosh. Like, fuck it, why not? Um, and then with Paige, it's like, you know, it didn't say 10 girls in a night. It didn't say 10 right. girls total. Um, I guess if it was implied that it was 10 girls in a night, I'd be like, okay, slay. But I still wouldn't be like, oh my god, what? Right. They were right. so confused. Right. And that kills me. It's just it's just makes me laugh. I like can't there's nothing else I can say aside I know. from the fact that I thought the reaction was really funny. <laughs> In but, this year of twenty twenty two, these men were like confused. I was like, All right, uh, moving on. It's Pride Month. Hello. This is a hate crime. Moving yeah, on. Like, <laughs> what? I don't I don't know. But that was my only thought about the truth or I mean the baggage claim game yeah. there was a few others i think that we haven't or i haven't mentioned but it was just not yeah just kind of casual stuff away. you know amber right. fell off a of bed orgasming i mean who hasn't yeah, been there actually i haven't fallen off of bed doing that but spiritually i can relate <laughs> uh, aside from that though we just get a the rest of the islanders find out that dummy has a heart-shaped uh birthmark TBD on whether or not it's actually heart shaped. I, again, I'm still very doubtful. And if he I wants to wanna submit see, evidence, no, oh, <laughs> I don't want to see that girl. Girl, I no, please redact that. I'm gonna leave that in, but no, we are not. Well, no. you know, send it to the right place. You can send it to me. Um, not for like any enjoyment purposes. Nobody I am a taken us- woman. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fair but i'm just saying like if he wanted to prove it i'm fine with that but like other than that it's just for science i'm just intrigued okay of how that works i do not want to log in to any of our socials at villa birds and see a dick pic i'm so sorry i just don't yeah Please i guess don't. i don't either no man do ever not. has taken like a good picture of his junk I'm not even going to get into that. That's a, this is a whole other conversation about like the standards of thirst traps and nude culture. I I can't talk about this. Nude culture. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just calling it nude culture, but I, (laughs) we release merch. (laughs) Villa birds, nude culture. There we go. Slayed. Can't, but yes. So this baggage claim game was very interesting, but next up, or I guess, do you have any concluding thoughts about baggage claim? I mean, not really. It was a very standard game. Uh, no drama came from it. Um, who kissed too? I mean, everybody was kind of kissing each other. And I guess we'll get into that when we get into the couples. Mm-hmm. Um, so in general, very procedural game of baggage claim. Yeah. It was fun. I enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed yeah. learning more about our contestants, and that is that. Um, all right, birdhouses. Birdhouses. Birdhouse house number one. I will introduce and Val, you take it away, girl. Our first birdhouse. We have Amber and Dami, and we've got Ikenna in India. Yes. Now, Val, who, what, where, when, why, and how are these two couples? in our first birdhouse all right so hmm where do i begin i mean i think 
the four of them are waiting for maybe something better. Maybe with the exclusion of Ikenna, who still seems intrigued by India, but the rest of them just are like, you know, still in limbo. So something that happened during baggage claim was that India and Dami shared a kiss. And I didn't want to get hasty, but I was excited to see that because, you know, I did think that once I saw a little bit more of their personalities, I did think that Dami and India would have been a better first day pairing just because they both seem like they would have more banter together. And that is something that India did bring up after the game, after she kissed Dami, was that she thought he was a good guy, he's funny, he's got a good chat, and that they have, like, good conversation. Um, that being said, Amber did talk a little bit more to Dami this episode, and she did start to kind of, you know, like him. I think it might be more of a situational thing where she's just getting to know him and wants someone else who walks in who's more her type comes in she'll maybe go for them but she said that you know it could be a slow burner and you know Akena is not really part of this try he's present for the triangle but he doesn't really have options or I guess it's not a triangle it's a square um but he doesn't really have options in this square right agree yeah Everything that you've said, I have nothing additional to add. I do want to see how Dami and India's dynamic unfolds. Um, yeah. I think that would be interesting to see, especially since one of them is very, very shy and the other one is not so much. <laughs> we always yeah. love a little introverted, extroverted dynamic, so that should go well. Our next birdhouse, we've got Luca and Paige and... <laughs> Andrew and Tasha. And this is an interesting dynamic, might I add. This one is interesting, yes. I mean, what is there to say? They confuse me. All of them confuse me. Yeah. I like I don't know where any of their heads are at. I feel like it's funny that Tasha is kind of throwing herself at Luca. Um Right. And they actually did share a kiss during the baggage claim. Game. They did, yes. And I thought that was very interesting because mm -hmm. it seemed like Luca then started to consider, like, okay, wait, maybe I should pursue something with her mm -hmm. further or at least talk to her a little bit more because he was reserved a little bit at first, which I thought was sweet. Yeah. But. Yeah. Um, um, well, so the day started – as I said before, with some couples cuddling, two of the couples cuddling in bed. Um, and those two couples were Luca and Paige and Tasha and Andrew. Um, so it seems like they might have gone in a little cozy in the bed. Um, but then by the afternoon, uh, Tasha was sticking it on Luca and uh, I no longer knew where any of their heads were at. Because right. Paige, let's throw Davida into the mix there, Paige likes Luca, but is also considering Davida. And that throws me for a loop too, because I'm like, you know, who wouldn't throw themselves at Davide? But I just don't even see their personalities matching i didn't see that they had good conversation but nonetheless like she was really trying with him but then to add on top of the mess tasha was also sticking it on to davida so i'm just like and and not to say that they shouldn't have their like shouldn't be open-minded but i just can't tell who likes each other the most like i can't tell who in this pairing is gonna end up together if any at all yeah, and I think the funny thing is, it's okay not to know. Like, this is why we're sitting here conversing about this. This is why our, you know, conversation is unfolding in the way that it is. And I definitely don't think that either of them 
Oh, I actually, that's a lie. I'm going to rescind that. I really like Luca and Paige together. I don't know why. I just, I dig yeah. them together. I think they I agree. suit one another in a good way, in a wholesome way. And I would love to see them interact more. I think they're both still a little shy. Everybody is a little shy, I've, I've found so far. But yeah. it'll be fun to see them blossom going forward. I think um, everybody is just nervous to I agree. be the first couple, mm-hmm. like the first solid couple, because, you know, while it's comfortable to be a couple from beginning to end and secure your spot in the final, it's also like you don't want to box yourself in to just one option when you don't know who's going to come into the house. And even I, in saying that I think Luca and Paige are the better match out of the square, um, I'm like, you know, I'm say I say it lightly because it's day two. Right. But I wouldn't Agreed. be mad if they tested the waters and were like a solid pairing for like at least a few weeks. Mm-hmm. No, I agree with that. And I definitely see them going a little bit longer. Um, but I'm going to say that with a pinch of salt because at the end of day two, as you mentioned, we have an option of two bombshells coming in. And I definitely think one of the two is going to like Luca and he's going to like them back. So I don't know. But, you know, you can't tell somebody's type just by looking you never at know. them. So, so I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. So I guess that was the second birdhouse that we're a little, you know, iffy about. Yeah. But ending, I guess, the roof of one of these birdhouses, <laughs> Tasha is competing or was competing with Gemma for Davide. And as we know, Gemma won. But mm-hmm. Gemma and Davide, what do we think? I do not like them at all. No, not I, at all. Horrible. Also, I wanted to talk about Davide saying that aside from good looks, he likes a a girl that's ambitious, who is family oriented, and likes to take care of her man. Um, Yeah. I didn't take that the right way. (laughs) Because it seems like he wants someone who doesn't have her own aspirations and dreams and isn't a world class uh what is it, like equestrian uh, equestrian so yeah i don't see them working out also i think the age difference is like a lot like yes that's the years, elephant in the room isn't it yeah um right. he's 27 so. and she's 19 i don't know when okay. his birthday is so it could be um so he's 28 9 what I forgot math already. But he's 28. It could be eight years or it could be nine years. Right. Depending on whether or not he's a summer birthday. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I feel the same way. I mean, we listen, we didn't talk about Davide at the end of the last episode only because, you know, he came in, he did his thing as a bombshell, which was come in and serve and mm-hmm. – <laughs> and end the episode on a cliffhanger. But we'll talk right. about him now that we've seen a little bit more of him. And like we said, it's just giving very much, I'm Italian and that's it. Right. Um, I don't know anything about him. Um, all I know is what he said he liked in women. And to add on the, to add on to that he said that most of his girlfriends are younger than him so it just adds like a layer of like uh, it just it doesn't feel right it, it, it feels very wrong um that he went in with eyes for Gemma, who's 19 mm-hmm. right. and he tends to go younger for his girlfriends but i mean outside of that He's not – he's handsome. He's pretty. But I wouldn't say that he's particularly charming. And this is something that tends to happen with the Italians every time they bring them onto the show because this has been a trope in the past, mm-hmm. starting in season one. They bring them in. They're hot. 
everybody goes for them. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then by the end of it, they end up, not to say that Divide is arrogant, I don't know that yet, but they end up doing mm-hmm. something that's maybe off-putting, and I don't know if it comes off like um, that way because there are cultural differences, but they end up doing something of the sort, and they end up getting dumped from the island, and we never really end up knowing that much about them. It's kind of like white on white crime over in the Love Island villa. <laughs> oh my god. Speaking of which, Paige trying to graft with Davide by saying that she's read mafia books and he's Italian. Stop. That I, was crazy. I audibly guffawed at that because I could not believe that she she was so nervous that I don't even think she knew what she was saying. And that killed me. But aside from that yeah. funny bit, um, yeah, Davide, I'm not, I'm not a fan on the Italian stallion. Um, it just I don't know. He seems very sinister to me. A little like little devious dubiousness happening. Um, nonetheless, yeah. though, our episode ends with him choosing Gemma, and Liam is left vulnerable. Liam is left Until, homeless in our universe because he does not have a yes. birdhouse, really. Yes, he does not. Well, he's in He's in the – oh, yeah, no, he's not even in the birdhouse. We didn't even talk about him because we just – he just wasn't relevant. Um, yeah. TBD, though, because we've got two, not one, two baddies entering the – and it's us. No. It's um, <laughs> I wish. I wish. <laughs> um no it is not us um because we are not british but we have two new islanders coming in wait before what? you even get into that i feel like something that i yes. forgot to mention speaking yes, of us n- not going into the villa because we're not british how come yes. italians are the only foreigners let onto this show dude i have no idea maybe he works in england I totally, you know, I think that in in terms of the application process, I think that you have to be a UK citizen. So I believe that he is a UK citizen. Um, But it seems like he is like, you know, maybe he goes back and forth. Maybe he's recently emigrated. Maybe he went there for school and stayed. But if that's the case, there are other people with a similar situation from different backgrounds and I'm like why are we only doing Italians like is this another like British like white on white microaggression where they're like we gotta get the uh the folks who are like the most romantic known for being the most romantic in Europe but then like why wouldn't you get a like a French person in there I don't know but that's a really good point but all that I've kind of understood from this is I think we need to, like, find people who have dual citizenships and get them on this show, and then we'll have an in on to discussing more about being in the villa. True, true. But good point. We'll send send our mutual friend Diana. She has a dual citizenship in (laughs) Romania, which is part of the EU, and as well as the United States. And she is hot as hell (laughs) oh my well you know what i can also attest to said hotness i agree and let's get her to love island u.s let's go we gotta oh god yeah okay well then there we go all right so we've got a plan in motion for someone that we also know (laughs) but aside from that though absolutely right about davide i hadn't even thought about that so interesting to see how that recruitment process works But our two new islanders, we have Afia and we have Ekin Su. And let me tell you, I think they both are coming in hot. Mm -hmm. I have no idea who the UK public is going to set them up with. I have no idea either. I honestly, so, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I don't want to mispronounce the first girl's name. What was her name? Mm -hmm. Ekin Su or Afia. (laughs) Afia. Afia seems like a sweetheart. So yes. I feel like the 
public would want to pair her with somebody who matches those vibes. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like they'll match her with Dami because he seems very okay. docile but very funny. Um, so I feel like they would suit each other well. And then I feel like the her second option would probably be Luca because I feel like very much the same way about him, like very chilled out guy. Seems like he can make a girl comfortable um, and they might have a good chat. But Ekansu, she seems like a fireball. I guess I was like, I don't know who they're going to go for. But I guess I do have some predictions. I don't know if they're allowed to pick Davide. Oh, just kidding. The mm-hmm. public is picking. I don't know if the public would I, set her up with them. him. I think Davide is going to be interested in Ekansu. I don't know why. I'm like putting I money so on it. Too. She's a brunette. She's got, like, the fiery passion. Like, he said he wants someone who's ambitious. He said he wants someone who, like, takes care of her man. Like, and she seems like she can hold it down. And I would be really interested to see their dynamic. I do think that he would ditch Gemma for Ekansu. Yeah, absolutely. In a heartbeat. I do. I I don't know that they're going to last. But. No, um, I think they'd go up in flames. Oh, absolutely. I think she could be the fireball in the villa that sets him sends him home but i don't know about the longevity of her stay in the villa i for some reason also see and this might just be because she so ekansu she's brunette but she definitely has like a um i never know how to pronounce this like a balange balayage have like yeah it's balayage she has Mm -hmm. a bit of a balayage situation going on so she's a little blonde as well Mm-hmm. And we can see that Andrew is into the blondes. I was just going to say, I really think Andrew is going to go for her. I don't know what yeah. it is about her, but she seems from what, and this is no shade to her at all, because I we know I don't like Andrew, but um, from his vibe and his mm-hmm. profession, I feel like she is his type. Yes, I agree. So, yeah, might be a good match. Who knows? But we also I know feel that like, Tasha, yeah. she's got to stay. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. I feel like a good option would also be Kenna for Ekansu. Okay. Oh, yes, she does have an S. So, yeah, I think that's the only requirement that Ekenna has. I think mentioned. he will fancy her for sure. I don't know that she would give him the time of day. I think it's possible. Um, no, we never know. But that's... she seems like she needs somebody to keep up with her, and he's more mellow. Right, and I, I think definitely she's gonna be. I don't want to say she's gonna be work because that's that's kind of like not what I'm trying to say. But I definitely think like she likes the drama and she likes to make sure that whoever's with her is constantly choosing her. And I think that'll be really fun as a spectator to view but yes i'm worried for whoever she's actually with yeah i totally agree she seems like a man eater for sure but like in a powerful way (laughs) i want to see her send people home right so it'll be interesting i mean i wonder if the the cup the public will have pity on liam and maybe set him up with one of the two but i don't know about that (laughs) I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think Liam might be going home. I think Liam is going home. I'm so sorry to that man. But he's just giving he's giving Callum season five. And I hate to refer to season mm-hmm. five for all references. But, you know, Callum played it safe. He played it sweet. There was nobody in the villa there for him, and he didn't do much to stay in. I mean, he tried to stick it on to right. Amber, but he got a little too offended about the glasses, and then that just didn't go anywhere. So, actually, I don't know that he got offended about the glasses, but the UK definitely got offended about the glasses. <laughs> but regardless, he just kind of faded into the background, and I just think that neither of the bombshells are going to go for Liam. Right. Um, and Liam is just going to fall to the wayside. So sorry to that man again. All right. you. I mean, you heard it here from the two villa birds themselves. Liam, 
is out. So that with that, our concluding thoughts about day two. Any any thoughts? I absolutely have no thoughts in my head about what <laughs> else is gonna happen. I have spoken everything that I can, but it's gonna be a good week. Yeah, I'm excited to see what happens. I'm excited for our first dumping. I mean, it's going to be dramatic no matter what happens. And yeah, I know we put in our prediction. I would be really shocked if something else happened. Uh, What do we have right now? We have two girls going in. Do you think anybody else is going to come in by the end of the week? I think we're going to cap out with three. I think we're going to get no more new people. I think this is the initial group. And we're going to see how things unfold. And yeah. I'm super excited to see what our cliffhanger is at the end of this week, actually. Mm. So let's see how that goes. Yes. And that is our second episode. <laughs> Yay, we did it. We're crushing it, honestly. Uh, thank you to everybody who has listened to us. Thank you to everybody I guess in the future who will listen to us and Val take it away with our socials girl guys you have to follow us on social media as they say on RuPaul's Drag Drag Race if you're not following us on social media you're only getting half of the story and don't get too spoiled just because you're getting two episodes this morning does not mean that you're going to be getting two episodes every every morning no that's not the case we are a wednesday and saturday mornings podcast okay so any other time you want to hear us talk about the show it's going to be on twitter at villa birds pod it's going to be on instagram at villa birds and it's going to be on tiktok at villa birds and so every morning on tiktok i'm going to be recapping the episode um on Instagram, we're going to be posting memes. On Twitter, we're going to be live tweeting. And we're going to be doing so much. So please, just because you see two episodes a week on this podcast does not mean that we're not talking about the show other places. And we want to hear what you guys have to say. We want to talk about that, about the show with you. So go find us on social media, bitches. Because you know we're the most beautiful, most intelligent. <laughs> I didn't I have not co-signed this like motivational <laughs> intro and outro. I certainly, you know, I don't have that kind of self-love. I would not, you know, brag believe, like this. No, no, no. It's got to come from within and if it's not coming from within you, it's going to come from me. So, <laughs> thank you to everybody and goodbye. Thank you and goodbye. Peace.